Juventus, also known as the Old Lady, are next up in our all-time best ever 11 series. We are darting through Italy and all of its historical greats in a bid to find the team who truly holds the greatest all-time 11 in world football. Who do you think takes the title? Why don't you let us know in the comments below. Up until recently, Juventus absolutely dominated domestic football in Italy. But since then, Inter, AC Milan and Napoli have all won their own Serie A title. Will the black and white stripes be back in style this year? We'll have to wait and see. At least they'll have a good go at the league given their recent ban from European competition. Again, ouch. They won't be distracted at least and based on last season's form, Juventus could be back. Prova col destro, a scendere, rete! Tiro ancora del Piero e il suo I mean, who else would be in goal for a Juventus all-time 11 but Gigi Buffon? Perhaps one of the best in football history in general, never mind just with Juve. Buffon is a certain pick for GK. Buffon has only just retired despite starting his professional career way back in 1995. The man is a machine. He recorded 316 clean sheets during his illustrious Juventus career. That's more clean sheets than some players make professional appearances. He won a shed load of trophies with Juve and despite famously never quite catching the Champions League, that was no fault of his own. And he will find solace in the fact that he is one of the elite few that can call themselves a World Cup winner. Lillian Turam is an obvious choice at right back. The Frenchman was simply world class whilst at Juve and of course was a World Cup winner with France too. To this day, nobody has played more games for the French national team. That says a lot about the quality and professionalism of the man. He bounced up and down the right flank for Juve, taking absolutely no prisoners, and at the time was widely regarded as the best right back on the planet. An easy pick at centre back is Giorgio Chiellini. A serial Serie A winner with Juve, Chiellini will go down in football history as a legend for both club and for country. The partnerships he formed with Barzagli and Bonucci made for a pretty impenetrable force for opposition strikers. As Juve romped to title after title, Chiellini was their captain and leading light. He epitomized the Italian defender rhetoric too. Smart, sneaky, well-organized, mature, and of course, as hard as nails. Gaetano Schirea joins Chiellini at centre-back. This player managed to go his whole career stopping strikers without ever receiving a red card. Impressive. Chirea won every trophy that he possibly could have with Italy, and for Juve, he won seven league titles amongst others. Over 14 years with the club, he slowly but surely became an obvious legend. Schirea's teammate at left-back was Antonio Cabrini. And like Schirea, Cabrini won all there was to win in football as well. They did so starting together for clubs and for country. And you might not know that Cabrini missed a penalty in the 1982 World Cup final against the Germans. But at least everything turned out okay in the end. And Italy, of course, lifted the trophy. On the wing is the 2003 Ballon d'Or winner and perhaps the greatest ever player from the Czech Republic, Pavel Nedved. His famous blonde bob shook as he twisted and turned defenders into knots. But those who didn't take the blonde mop seriously soon found Nedved sticking the ball into the back of the net. Voted the best in the world with good reason, Nedved was a defender's nightmare. One of few that stayed with the club after scandal hit and they were relegated. He was also a fan's favourite. Another man who didn't jump ship after the Calciopoli scandal was Mr Juventus himself. Alessandro Del Piero, the famous, fabulous footballer, turned down the likes of Sir Alex Ferguson and Man United many times amongst a whole host of other offers. With the club he loved, Del Piero won the Champions League, eight Serie A titles and became their top goalscorer of all time. Beat that. Michel Platini was widely regarded as a football genius and the best player in the world when he made his way to Turin to play for Juve. The Frenchman was magical. He won the Ballon d'Or three times whilst at the club, won two league titles and of course a European Cup. He scored over 100 goals in 223 games and was an unbelievable all-rounder in the middle of the pitch. And speaking of top quality French midfielders, why don't we get Zinedine Zidane involved in this team? 
With this selection, Zidane joins a tiny group of players that have made the all-time 11 of more than just one side in this series. To be in one all-time XI is special, but two is just ridiculous. Zidane also won a Ballon d'Or whilst at Juve, as well as back-to-back -back league titles. You will do better to find a more talented midfield four than that. Who cares if they can't defend? Giampiero Boniperti donned the black and white of Juventus all the way back between 1946 and 1961 and scored 179 goals for the club. An amazing forward who could assist and score, Boniperti was champion of Italy six times with Juve. He's considered one of their best players ever and held the goal scoring record all the way up to 2006 until he was overtaken by Del Piero. Last but not least is Roberto Betega. Betega was a big, strong striker who also racked up 179 goals for the club. Betega was top scorer of Serie B in 1970 and top scorer of Serie A a decade later in 1980. He won a mind-bending seven league titles, two cups and a UEFA Cup as Juventus' top striker. And but for an injury, he would have been a 1982 World Cup champion as well. So there you have it, not bad for an old lady, eh? Did you think Pogba would be in with a shout? Think again, Juventus are giants of Italian football and they were big before the 21st century too. If you think you would make any changes, however, make sure to let us know in the comment section below. And either way, we'll see you in the next video.